Hello everyone, welcome to GeoTiles. This is a new asset library that I have released and let's go over some of the neat features. So at first, let's just make sure that our file paths are pointed to the right spot. So I've got GeoTiles right here. Perfect, so I can load it to my asset library and I can start playing around. So we can see that we have hexagon patterns, some other generic patterns, and then square patterns. So over 50 patterns, and these are not your average patterns. So we're just gonna pull a random one out and we can see right away that it is obviously 3D. It's not just a flat thing. And if we go over to our modifier stack and we can go to our geometry nodes tree here, we can start playing around with some of the uh, features. So we can expand the grid. Just be careful with the expansion because if you add too many, it might uh, be a lot of geometry. And then we can start to mess with the individual tile size if we wanted to, but we're just gonna leave that at one. And then we have this rotate tile instance. So on in this particular one, let's just see how it goes. So it's going to rotate 60 degrees and the probability of the rotation is currently set to zero, but if we set it to 0.5, 50%, so 50% of the tiles are rotating. So this is a way for us to break the seam look so our eyes can detect seams and patterns, or they can detect patterns, but if we break the seam, then it will look like a non-pattern because you can't detect it because it's random. So that is a feature in most of these tiles. Some of the tiles just don't uh, quite work with that. So that is not available on all of them. So we're gonna set that back to zero. Let's look at some of the other things that we can mess with and adjust the thickness. So already getting some different looks. You can change it to round or to flat. So if it's set to one, it is round. If it's set to zero, it is not round. We want thickness. Let's set, set the resolution to something a little lower. Let's just do six. There we go. And we can see that a odd number of vertices makes it kind of a little, doesn't line up right. So if we do an even number of vertices, you will see that it lines up nice and neat. Okay. And then the next thing we got, we've got our corner desk. We're just going to turn this to uh, round again. We can start to adjusting the corner look so we can have a very different look to our pattern just by adjusting that the size of it and uh, the start of end, start and end so basically kind of trimming the paths as we go so that's a cool thing and then we have the materials that you can add your own materials these are just the default for now so very cool fun fun let's go for another one let's go into one of the basic ones so we got kind of our basic herringbone right here loading in those materials and you can see it's pretty straightforward uh, herringbone we can change the uh, count the x count and the y count a little different than the hexagon setup then we obviously can change the size of our tiles so we can have fun with that tile rotation so we can start rotating whatever we want the tilt so this will tilt kind of the upward or the certain axis of the top of the tile so you can create some neat looks to it. Nice. And then we have a material seed so we can randomize the materials on this object. All right, we'll go for this one. So this one is a uh, kind of a more complex pattern. We've got um, center points and midpoint uh, pattern but we'll go over that uh, in another video. But just wanted to do a quick run through. So we have the grid size. So this is a little different than the hexagon pattern. We can adjust that and then we can adjust the density. So basically how dense we want it. Be careful with the density because the more uh, geometry you add, the more it has to calculate. So just be cautious when it comes to that. And then we got our ring count. So we can change the number of rings within our tile. It is capped at a certain amount. I think it's like 40 or something just so it doesn't get too extreme. Then we have our height. We all know what that is. And then we have the height factor. So this is basically looking at uh, each of these rings and it's subtracting 0.05 from them. So we could increase that. So then it has this effect kind of going up. And then we also have this uh, height factor type. So before I do that, I'm just gonna set the height factor to one. We're going to see a very extreme version of this. 
And if I select zero, it's going to be uh, an addition of the factor. And now we're going to change it to a multiplication. So right now it's just flat because it's multiplying everything by one. But if we start to increase this, we're going to see kind of an exponential growth in the um, differences between the ring. And then we can start to play with some of the other parameters. We can adjust the thickness of the rings. We can change these to round as well. We can do the boolean. So we can do multiple booleans. You can see here that we're cutting even more away from it. So that's cool. We can turn that off if we wanted to. So it's like that. Boolean position. So once we have this bool selected, we can then change the position of where it's located. So we can kind of create some interesting cuts within the pattern. And then we'll see something new down below. So we have a random material seed. It's currently set to negative one. So what it's doing is each ring is taking in sequence from this material stack. So we have material A, B, C, D. So it's doing that in order. And if I set the number of materials, to let's say three, it's only gonna notice the top three, top two, so now we can do kind of a zebra pattern if we wanted to, and then if we just wanted to select one, we can do one. So that's what happens when the material seed is set to negative one. Here we are back with the default settings of this pattern, and all these patterns have been made from kind of the grid flat standpoint, but after I made them, I made about 95% of them compatible with two other ways of creating patterns. So we have the first pattern, which is kind of a radial um, brick pattern. So you can make some really interesting things by bringing the camera inside or doing a close sweep of a rotating cylinder of these patterns. So some cool options there. The next thing we have is the kind of a custom curve. So we have that plugged in there and we have a arc, right? So this is an arc that has been plugged into the curve target. However, if we make our own custom curve, so I do have a custom curve right here. And if I select that, then we can now put the pattern along that path. So you can make some custom uh, curve patterns with that. So that's pretty cool. And there you have it. You've got geo tiles. There are over 50 tiles that you can start adding to your scene and adding some geometric goodness. The possibilities are pretty endless, and I'm excited to see what everyone starts to use with these geo tiles.